I hope you watched the last video on deadweight loss and efficiency, otherwise you're about to be very confused. They say that only two things in life are certain, death and taxes, and for some people, they're not sure which ones they dislike more. However, in this video we're only going to be focusing on one of those, and that is taxes. So let's go over to the chalkboard and look at the supply and demand graph and how taxes affects that. Anyone who's ever bought something has had to pay or been subject to a sales tax which is a type of excess tax. As you'll remember from the previous video, an excess tax is one that everybody pays equally regardless of income, which is not to be confused with a lump sum tax because an excise tax is usually used for a sale of a good or a service. So, with our look into taxes, we are going to start with the very basic supply and demand graph. So you'll remember from all of our previous videos, the supply and demand graph, you have your axis with price on one side and quantity on the other. You'll have your supply curve and your demand curve. And the combination of those two curves will create your equilibrium point. Now, we're going to look at what happens to this supply and demand curve when you look at it with tax. Yes, that is right. We are now taking the normal market that we've been looking at and we're adding a tax to it. Now the first thing that's going to happen is that one of our two curves is going to shift because with the addition of the tax, someone is go there's going to be a change in price and quantity somehow. So for this example, we're going to be adding this tax to the supply curve. Just remember that if you add the tax to the demand curve and uh, the, uh, the responsibility for the tax gets shifted onto the consumer, which is something we'll talk about later, you will have the same numbers come up once you do all the calculations, which we will again get to later. Now, what's going to happen is that this tax is going to cause a new equilibrium point. Well, it's not technically an equilibrium point because you're not in equilibrium, but it's going to create a new point that we're going to look at. And you'll notice that the quantity line, which is what we're going to be looking at for right now, hits the supply and demand curve now at two different points. So we're going to need to specify what each point is. So at the top there, you're going to have the price that the consumer pays. That's where the quantity hits the demand curve the new demand curve, or effectively what you might call the new equilibrium price if you were looking at the tax supply as the actual supply, which it's not. We will get to that in a second. Now you're also going to see where the quantity under tax line hits the old supply curve, which is going to be the price that the supplier receives. Now. What is that difference going to be? Well, if the consumer is paying $10 for something and the supplier is only receiving $5, where's that additional $5 going? Well, that's the money going to the government. That money is the amount of the tax. That is all we need to know on this graph right now. We will be coming back to this a little bit later in the episode though. Now, a very common misconception is that just because they're the ones who are paying, the producers are always the ones who are kind of on the hook for paying taxes. But that's not always true, and it depends on the elasticity of the good. I'd also like to point out that the common AP term for this is the tax incidence. Definition's up there, folks. Zoom out definitions up there folks. The general concept. 
the more elastic a good is, the more the producer is going to pay of the good. And the more inelastic the good is, the more of the tax is going to be shifted to the consumer. box makes a fair point. It's also important to note that when you tax, there's a loss of efficiency, otherwise known as a deadweight loss. You're also going to want to note about how to calculate the total revenue of a tax. It's that, it's the little box right there, the area of the box between where the tax quantity is and the line t multiplied by the total value of the tax. Until next time, this is Duncan Fox sitting in his basement filming himself.